Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to play Skyhawk, designed by Steve Dixon and published by Legion War Games. In this game you pilot a Skyhawk jet bomber on a series of missions in a campaign format over North Vietnam in 1966. There's tons of attention to historical detail, a great variety of missions, you can even add in more planes to fly in flights of four Skyhawks if you'd like. Let's jump in and get this plane in the air. Let's do a quick overview of the mission and how it's going to play out. What we're looking at right now is kind of the game board, if you will, where all of the action takes place. We can see our Skyhawk here on the carrier. It's going to get airborne. It's going to go up in this one. And we're going to basically follow through this series of boxes as it carries out its mission. We're going to have some inbound events. We could have some refuel. We're going to set up our support. Then we make our target runs up here. Then we head outbound to the carrier, transit to the carrier, carry approach. And if all goes well, we'll end up back on our carrier, going around in a big circle like this. Now, there's a few other things to note here. This, uh, as we get into this zone here, this is where the enemy fire will happen. We're going to have MiGs, SAMs, anti-aircraft fire, and small arms. We're also going to have some support aircraft. They're going to help us deal with these. And so we'll be using this section of the map quite a bit. Over here, we have some uh, an optional rule that we're not going to be using if your plane is shot down. And then on the right here, we have a repair track that's used for the campaign game and parts of that. We're not going to be using those as well. So basically, we're going to be going around in a big circle. Hopefully, with any luck, we'll be ending up back here on our carrier safe and sound. The other thing that we'll be using is this Skyhawk mission record card. This is where we're going to be tallying up all the damage on our plane and any other notations on things that happen. So we can see here we've got a model of the Skyhawk with all these little boxes where we can take damage and things like that, as well as our subsystems go down these sides here, landing gear, if we take three hits to the landing gear, that'll break. And then we have some just kind of general things about our pilot. This is our pilot's name. We're going to fly with Hulk today. And in the game, you can uh, usually you do a die roll for whether you're an experienced veteran or green pilot. I'm going to pick experienced pilot just kind of because I think that'll be a good way to show gameplay. So we're going to pick the option right in the middle. Now there's an altitude option here. I'm actually going to use the altitude markers on the main game board. I find I forget about it if I put it over here. And then down below, we have some record keeping for the mission. We'll be back to take a look at this shortly. But this is basically kind of the plane's record of its events during the camp during the mission. The other player aid we'll be using is the Skyhawk Ordnance card. This is where we're going to choose the munitions that we're going to be putting onto our wings as well as onto the center line. So we have five places that we'd be putting stuff, uh, either fuel or bombs, to help us out. We'll come back and take a look at this as we get ready for the mission. Lastly, we have an awards record sheet. This is more for the campaign game. I just wanted to show this. We probably won't be referring to this during this mission unless something um, extremely good or extremely bad happens. This game uses a lot of charts and tables, which are in the charts and tables book. And then another book here, which is our target listing gazetter. Now there are some options for doing this. We're going to use the, the Navy target list for this one. And that's our first assignment as we are at our morning briefing. It's 12 August, 1966, and we need to find out what our target's going to be. So we are going to roll two 10 sided dice to generate a number one to hundred. We get 33. So let's see what our target is. A 33 gives us our location is Port Walnut. We're either going to be hitting naval base facilities on a zero to four or dropping some mines on a five to nine. Uh, the target is either buildings or water if it's mine laying. Let's see what we get here. We get a zero. So we will be going after some naval base facilities, which are building targets, and it's in route package 6B, which is going to be important for determining our fuel characteristics. So let's set this up. So on our Skyhawk mission record card, we're going to write the target, the type, and the location down here. I'll get this added. All right, naval base facilities, type is buildings, locations, Port Walnut, and it's route package 6B. Now we get to determine the weather. All right, to determine the weather at the target, we're going to roll on this uh, weather WX target and recovery trap. 1D10, let's see what we get. We get a 9. Good weather. Most excellent. Now we have to roll for the recovery weather here, the weather at the trap for the recovery. We don't roll for weather at the launch. Let's see what we get. A 2. That is poor weather. Okay, so we'll put down good here, just good. We know the weather at the target's going to be good, but poor on our recovery, which will make our landing a little bit more tricky. But so far, so good. Even though we're pretty much ready for takeoff now, we do have to see if there's a single mission event that could change things for us. Let's see what kind of things come up here. We get an eight. Oh, weather deteriorates at Yankee Station. Yankee Station is our launch thing. The weather turns poor at Yankee Station for a launch of the Skyhawk. Apply a minus five die roll to the roll on table three when launching the Skyhawk. So we'll have to note that down that we've got uh, bad weather here, minus five. So it'll kind of make our takeoff a little bit more challenging. Hopefully we'll still be okay though. 
So now that we know what our target is, we can put the bombs on the plane. Let's see what we've chosen here. First up, because it's root package 6B, which dictates how far away it is, we need at least 300 gallons of external fuel. So we're going to take a 300 gallon fuel tank and put it on the center line of the plane. It's 1950 pounds, which is well below the center line limit of 3600 pounds. So that gives us enough gas for the mission, enough fuel for the mission here. Now, we can put uh, loadouts on the wings too. On the internal, the inboard and left and right inboard uh, uh, pylons, we're gonna add six Mark 81 snake eyes in three bomb clusters. This will total about 1,500, this will total 1,500 pounds, which is under the 1,950 pound limit out there. The nice thing about this is that it'll give us about a 50% chance to hit the target. And if we do, there's gonna be a lot of damage modifiers because we're literally gonna be dropping 12 bombs on this building at the same time, especially if we hit it. Now, with the snake eye bombs, you have to make a determination at loadout time as to the you want them with the fins in or fins out. The fins out gives a kind of a drag mode of bombing. It makes it more accurate. And that's what we're going to do because we want the plus modifier. So that's going to have a better chance of hitting its target. That does mean that we have to, one, remember that these are in drag mode, that they're going to be fins out, dropping them that way. And then also we have to be at low altitude with the Skyhawk when we release the bombs. We've also attached out on the wings two AGM-12B missiles, put one on each wing. These don't have the greatest chance to hit, but if we get enough times around and we could make two or three passes at the target, um, you have to file, fire these missiles individually. So our first run, we'll be dropping these snake eye bombs at low altitude. Second run, we'll fire a missile. Third one, if we get it, we'll be firing the, the last missile out on the other wing here. So that gives us our ordnance load. I think it's a could be pretty effective, especially if these snake eye bombs hit. We're going to come at low altitude with the fins out and let them fly. Our Skyhawk is loaded for war. We've got our target. The rain has started to fall here at the aircraft. We do have to determine how many support units are going to be helping us with the mission. We could get anything from none to six. And honestly, this is one of the biggest die rolls of the mission. Because if we're going this alone, it's really hard. And even to the point that if I do roll a zero here, I'm actually going to re-roll it so that we get some support aircraft. Because I want to show how that mechanic works in the game too. Even if I'm playing a campaign by myself, or not just doing one, of course I would take this. But let's hope we don't get a zero here. We get an eight, which is five available units. That's sweet. I think we'll, we're gonna, probably going to do, though, I think I'm actually going to tamper that down to four because five is going to take quite a bit of time to manage, and it's actually going to make the mission, I think, kind of easy. So uh, let's tamper it down to four and work with that. So we've chosen our four support units. We're going to take two F4 Phantoms. These are good because they can go after pretty much everything that we're going to be aiming for here. Uh, small arms, anti-aircraft, SAMs, or MIGs. So we'll take two of those and those will engage our targets here. We're also going to take a Skywalker for its ECM, so its countermeasures here. So we'll bring that to kind of start to jam the enemy unit, jam the enemy targeting and stuff like that. This will make it a lot easier for our run in. And then we've got, this is actually mis misnamed, it should be an EA6 intruder rather than an F6 six intruder but we can use this for electronic countermeasures too but it also can go against small arms anti-aircraft and sams the only thing it can't do is migs so this should give us a pretty good balance and if things go really well we can slide these two planes over and keep them on uh, electronic counter message message if we're lucky enough to destroy all of the enemy defenses here so i'm happy to have our four compatriots with us on this mission so Lieutenant Hulk looks out the cockpit of his Skyhawk. The rain is falling on his aircraft carrier here at Yankee Station. It's time to launch. We're going to roll on the launch table here. Now it's minus five to this die roll because of the weather. Hoping for something nice and high with no incident. We get a 48 minus five, which is well within the seven to 100 roll that we need. Our Skyhawk successfully launches into the air. So the Hulk is airbound and heading towards North Vietnam. Now we're gonna set his altitude at high. And again, usually these are done on the mission record card, but I tend to forget if it's over there because it's not in kind of line of sight. So I just put them here and then adjust as we go. And you can adjust your altitude freely between these boxes. They're considered to be far enough apart that you can choose whatever altitude you want. So we'll go at high for now. And we have an inbound random event to roll for now. So we're gonna roll on this inbound random events table. We get a three. Subsystems malfunction. Oh no, C note B. A subsystem malfunction occurs. Mark off one hitbox from the affected subsystem on the Skyhawk mission record sheet. So we get a one, it's electrical, and so on and so forth. Let's see what we get. We get a five, it's hydraulics. So let's adjust that now. 
So in our Skyhawk damage system here, we're gonna check a box for the hydraulic system. Uh, one more hit and we'll have problems with that, but so far it's still functioning, just a little bit of damage there. So no worries unless we have the misfortune of having it happen again. With that taken care of, let's have the Hulk uh, head towards North Vietnam. We're gonna have to do an aerial refuel. We'll stay at high altitude here. Now we have to roll for the aerial refuel chart. To successfully refuel, we have to roll on this aerial refueling box. Uh, no die roll modifiers impacting us here. We just need a good roll. Get a six, successful refueling, continue with the mission. No issues there. Now it's time for us to head into the support attacks box. And a lot happens here. We get started, this is where the busy stuff starts to happen. We're gonna drop down to low altitude. I'll talk about why momentarily. But we are going to start combat now. We can see two big things happen here. We have a fuel check and then the enemy is going to fire at us. Before that happens, we're gonna have to allocate our support aircraft as well. Let's perform our fuel check first here. So we're gonna roll on the fuel check box in the support attack box. Let's hopefully we get nothing bad here. We get a three, our fuel is okay. So we have successfully performed, um, we successfully kind of crossed that, that troublesome area. Now let's talk a little bit about what happens here with the enemy fires. Before the enemy fires at us in this box, we get to allocate our support aircraft. And one of the reasons why I wanna get at low altitude is that the SAMs the, can't fire at us at high altitude, so at that low altitude. So we're gonna kind of not worry about the SAMs because we're gonna try to come into target approach, target attack, and just do all the way across at low. And that way we don't have to worry about these, the SAMs here. So we can concentrate on the small arms, anti-aircraft fire, and the MiGs. And so with that in mind, we're gonna, especially I'd like to knock out the small arms fire and the anti-aircraft, because those are the things that can really hit us here. Now, well, everything can, the MiGs are gonna be bad too. But first, so we're gonna kind of designate what we wanna do. The Sky Warrior can only do one thing. It's gonna go into electronic countermeasures. And the way this works on things, it's gonna modify a lot of the roles that we have and our enemies have against us and what roles that we have against our enemies. We're gonna put the, uh, the intruder here. Let's put this on the small arms fire. We're gonna see if we can hunt for those small arms fire shots. We'll put one Phantom on the anti-aircraft and then one Phantom on the MiGs because we don't have to worry about these if we're at low altitude. So now we've allocated things and it's now kind of time for these to have a one-on-one -on -one battle, basically. So we're gonna roll, we go first, we get to roll to see if we do any damage to the small arms, anti-aircraft, and then the MiGs, and we'll, then they attack back at these craft in addition to attacking the Skyhawk, unless it's the MiG. The MiG, as long as it's covered by one of our support aircraft, it's not going to attack us. So let's start first with our small arms fire. So to resolve our attacks here of our support aircraft against these stations, we're gonna use this US support fire attacks against the North Vietnamese defense boxes. First up, we're gonna have our intruder try to hunt down and take out the small arms fire in the stations that we're seeing aiming at us and the Skyhawk here too. So we're gonna roll on the small arms column. It is a, a five to nine that we need to be able to hit. There is a plus one die roll modifier because we have electronic countermeasures active. However, that doesn't apply to small arms and MiGs. It only applies to the SAMs and anti-aircraft, but we will need here then a five or six to suppress it, seven, eight, nine to knock it out. Let's get this one out of action quick. Excellent work by our intruder. We knock out immediately the small arms fire. So rockets and guns take out the small arms fire. That puts us in a good position because that'll take out one of the two things that can fire at us as we come in here on the target now. Let's go now to our Phantom aiming at the anti-aircraft uh, anti-aircraft fire here. We do get a plus one die roll modifier now for the electronic countermeasures. So we're gonna roll one die. Let's get another good one here. Oh gosh, one plus one is a two. Complete miss on that. We failed here. Now we're gonna go down to the MiGs and the MiGs are a special, little bit of a special case, but for right now, we're gonna roll our Phantom attacking the MiGs. Hopefully we can put this out of action relatively quickly. We do not get a plus one modifier because it's against an aircraft here. So our Phantom starts to dogfight with the enemy MiG. Let's see what we get. Hoping for a nice big number. Ah, four, nothing, we miss. Okay, so now, We've knocked out the small arms fire, but we have to face the anti-aircraft fire and the MiGs. The SAMs can't fire at us because it's low altitude and they only fire defensively at an, an aircraft that we're attacking it specifically. So first up, uh, we would have ground fire attacking our intruder in Skyhawk, but it's knocked out. So we don't have to worry about that. Now we have anti-aircraft fire. It's gonna attack the Phantom and then attack the Skyhawk. It gets to attack both things. So 
So first up, our anti-aircraft firing at the, the Phantom here. It is a minus one because we have the electronic countermeasures from our Sky Warrior working. Get a five, minus one is a four. Excellent, complete miss for the anti-aircraft fire. Now the anti-aircraft fire will fire at our Skyhawk. And for that, we use this uh, Table 12, Defensive Fire versus the Player's Skyhawk. We're gonna at low altitude, so we lose the, use the low altitude chart. This one has a minus one because we have electronic countermeasures in action. And that's the only modifier that's going to apply for us right now. So hoping for a nice low roll, get a five, minus one is a four. Excellent, it just missed and it missed because we had the electronic countermeasures on. So no luck for either us or the anti-aircraft, no damage done here. Now we have to go to the MiG taking on our Phantom. Now the MiG here does not attack the Skyhawk as long as we have an aircraft allocated to it. So it's gonna be the MiG trying to take on the Phantom here. There are no die roll modifiers. The MiG comes up, we need a nice low roll here. We don't wanna lose our Phantom yet. A seven, Ugh, gosh, that's hit. So that's not good. We lose our Phantom, is taken out of action. We're gonna take that and that's dropped from the mission. So now we have, well, I mean, it's good. We knocked out the small arms fire. So maybe we can redirect our intruder to the anti-aircraft and redirect our Phantom to the MiG in the next round. But yeah, we went one for one there, but not all that bad. So our support units then, that takes care of all of the combat in this uh, support attacks round. We've gotten through okay and gotten through unscathed, although we did lose one of our phantoms. We were able to knock out the small arms fire. The mission continues on. So after this first round of combat, our air support units go back to their support box and our Skyhawk will continue on. It now has the target in sight. And we are in the target approach zone. We are gonna stay at low altitude because the, SAM, the small arms are knocked out and that'll keep the SAMs from being able to fire at us. And now it's a lather, rinse, repeat type of situation where we're gonna reallocate our aircraft and go through this round again. Of course, we're gonna put the Skywalker up on electronic countermeasures, that's all it can do. We've only got one Phantom left, so we need this Phantom to have better luck than our previous one with the MiG. If we lose this Phantom on this run, that'll give the MiG an, basically an undenied attack on our Skyhawk in the next round. And we'll put our intruder on the anti-aircraft fire basically to try to take that out. So we start out here again with our US support aircraft um, attacking the uh, anti-aircraft here. And once again, we need a good roll here. We do get a uh, plus one to this roll because we've got electronic countermeasures going. Hopefully we can suppress it or knock it out here. This Phantom did a good job against the small arms fire. Hopefully it's still good here. God, three plus one is a four. No effect on the anti-aircraft. Failed this time. Our Phantom now up against the MiG. Let's see how it goes here. Hopefully we have better luck than the last time. We need a six at least to suppress it here. That would be good. No die roll modifiers because the electronic countermeasures don't work against the MiG. Let's get a nice big roll. Six is suppressed. Okay, so that helps. That means that the MiG is going to get a minus one die roll modifier to it when it attacks us and when it attacks this aircraft. So hopefully that'll put us in a better place because two suppressed equals eventually kind of a, a disengaged, which will work just as well as knocking it out. So that's a start against this one. Now we have to go with the anti-aircraft firing against us, anti-aircraft firing against our intruder here. We have a minus one to the die roll modifier because of electronic countermeasures. Let's see what we get. Nice little roll here. Zero. Oh, couldn't be any lower than that. That's a negative one. It didn't even get to fire. Perfect. So no effect on our uh, support craft. It does get to fire on our Skyhawk, however, and it gets a minus one because we have countermeasure, electronic countermeasures in here. So hopefully we get no hits here on our Skyhawk. Oh no, we get a nine, minus one is an eight. Oh, it's a good thing we had the um, electronic countermeasures in action here because um, if we didn't, it would have been a direct hit, which would have knocked us out. Instead, our Skyhawk takes three hits worth of damage. Yikes. So for this one, we have to roll on the North Vietnamese target defensive fire damage table. Got three rolls to make. There are some chances for superficial damage in here. Hopefully nothing catastrophic. A seven, ah, oh, perfect, superficial damage. Let's keep it up. Let's keep rolling sevens. A seven, yes, superficial damage. Again, let's get another one. Six, oh, the nose. Roll on table 12.2. 
All right, so the nose of the Skyhawk takes a hit. There's still a chance here it could be superficial damage as well. A three, it is. We take superficial damage as well. So three hits by the anti-aircraft. A little bit sh rips through the nose of the craft here, but other than that, it's just some scratches and dings. And one quick correction, the nose was hit uh, for an area hit. So even though we rolled superficial damage on the subsection hit, for we didn't like, get the avionics damaged, for example, because the nose was hit, we still check off one of the two nose section boxes. So it's a little bit depleted there for strength. Our durable Skyhawk is still up in action. So lucky for us with the anti-aircraft, now the MiG gets to attack our Phantom, and this is a big roll because we don't want the, the MiG to be able to attack us unadulterated here. We need this uh, Phantom in action to be able to keep them off of our Skyhawk as it makes its bombing run here. So uh, we get n minus one die roll to this because we have a single suppressed marker on this. Um, hopefully we have some good luck here. Let's get a nice little roll. Oh, whew, that was key. Four minus one is a three. The MiG doesn't hit our Phantom. And that ends this round here. So the anti-aircraft fires at our intruder then and our Skyhawk hit it, but just superficial damage. The MiG and the Phantom Duel, we've put a little bit of a suppression onto the MiG here, which will carry over to the next round. That ends this round. Now, the fun part, we get to blow stuff up. First, however, as always, our support craft, we didn't lose any that round. They go back to the support unit box. Everything stays here. The MiG's still slightly suppressed. Hulk eyes his target, these naval port facilities there. The buildings loom in the horizon. It's flying at it's at extraordinarily high speed, low altitude, right over the the city building tops here as it goes over, or perhaps over the water as it approaches the naval port facilities. It's got it in sights, but first up, we have to do the enemy fires and our fire as well. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Skywalker, electronic countermeasures, Phantom going after the MiG, the intruder going after the anti-aircraft. Sam can't fire because we're at low altitude still. We got the fins out on our snake eye bombs ready to release here, but first we have to go through this. So we're up. The Intruder is going to go against the anti-aircraft. It has had no luck against the anti-aircraft so far. Let's see if we can do this better. Let's get a nice big roll here. Oh gosh, a three plus one is a four, right? Suppress, no, nope. needed a five to suppress it. No luck against the anti-aircraft, darn it. All right, so now our Phantom is going against the MiG. Let's see if it can take this out of action. That would be helpful, because then we could redirect the Phantom against the uh, anti-aircraft here. I'm going to switch to the white die. We get uh, plus one here to the, no, we don't. We don't get a plus one because it's the MiG. So our Phantom kind of fires. Let's get hit the Skyhawk here. Ah, oh, one, it's terrible, total miss. No luck there. Okay, so the anti-aircraft is gonna fire at our intruder here first. Uh, it is minus one because of the, uh, the electronic countermeasures. Gets a three minus one is a two, no luck there. Now it fires at our Skyhawk. Hopefully we don't get any damage here. Six minus one is a five. Ooh, we do take a hit. So our uh, Skyhawk once again get hit by anti-aircraft. We're gonna roll on this uh, defensive fire damage table. Get a, another seven. That's our third seven out of four, superficial damage. So our Skyhawk is just taking a beating, but nothing really significant. I'm kind of, uh, kind of accumulating to the aircraft here. That takes care of the anti-aircraft. Let's go to the MiG. The MiG gets to fire at our Phantom. We're hopeful here we can keep at least keep the MiG busy. It does get the minus one die roll modifier because it is um, uh, engaged here. So hopefully we have good luck here. Let's get a nice low roll. Two, excellent. Minus one is a one and it misses. So our MiGs and Phantoms can still stay busy with each other. They are continuing on in this mission. That continues the, that completes the support portion of this. Now it's time for our Skyhawk to drop its bombs. Now comes the fun part. This is why we're here. We're going to drop all of our snake eye bombs, 12 250 pound snake and Mark 81 snake eye bombs right on to these naval port facilities. Just for color, I've brought our bombs over here as well. And we are skimming across the water tops, low altitude. We've got it in our sights. It all comes down to this one roll on the Mark 81 250 pound snake eye bombs. And we can see here that we normally, we need a zero to five, a zero, a six to nine to hit. But because we designated these as fins out and we're at low altitude, we get a plus one modifier to it. So we have a 50-50 shot here. It's basically a flip of a coin. We need a five to nine to be able to hit. Let's get this. Three. 
We are off target on our bomb run, all that work, and we fail, kind of, not necessarily, because we still could do some damage to the building here. We're going to roll on this US uh, attack tables percentage points table for the off target column. Now, one of the other things here, there are some die roll modifiers for this. We get a plus one die roll modifier for each three bomb cluster that we're dropping uh, um, onto the, the target. And we've got four of these. So it's actually a plus four die roll modifier here. So even though we're off target, we could do okay if we get a nice big number here. Six plus four is a 10. So we get, uh, we get to roll 3d10 and then add the results to 10. So because we, can, we, we it was a near miss, right? So let's see what we get here for our near miss. That's not too bad. Three and seven is 10 and nice big number, nine. So 19 plus 10. 29% damage we've done to the target with our miss with all those 12 bombs. Let's go record that on our mission record card. So we roll, uh, our first bomb run here was off target, but we did get 29% damage, which will give us 29 points here. So that's, I mean, that's not too bad, right? And we still have two missiles that we could theoretically use if we can make another pass on the target here. So maybe a sidewall of one of the buildings of the port facilities there shattered and falling to pieces here. We've done 20, for a little bit over a quarter of the damage on the structure there. That's not too bad, especially for a miss. So, I mean, just a lot of bombs, right? I mean, we just 12 bombs on it. So we can get rid of these because they're gone now too. Now we have to, um, let's uh, clean up for this one. Our intruder and our phantom kind of tail off and make another, gonna get ready for another pass as well as our sky warrior. And we are done with the target attack box. Now we go to the target exit box and we do it all one more time. We're gonna put the Skywalker, Skywalker on electronic countermeasures, our intruder on the anti-aircraft fire, and the Phantom on the MiGs here. Now it is suppressed. Hopefully we can get some better results here now. We go through the same results. So we're gonna go for our intruder attacking our anti-aircraft units here. All right, so let's see if we can finally put this out of action. Let's get a nice big roll here. Come on, let's get an eight or a nine. Seven, oh, that's right. We get the plus one modifier from our East Electronic Countermeasures means that we do get an eight, and eight is knocked out on the anti-aircraft. Finally, the intruder does its job and takes out the anti-aircraft. Excellent. Now let's go to our Phantom on the MiG. We're hoping for another suppressed result that would be uh, eventually disengage it after this round. Let's get another eight or nine here. Come on, let's get our Phantom dialing in. It's been a long dogfight between these two. Seven is suppressed. Okay, so that's actually pretty good as well. And the reason is that two suppressed here equals a uh, disengaged. Alrighty, so to our advantage, we've knocked out the anti-aircraft, so that no longer fires. The MiG gets one more chance to fire here though, but after this round, these two suppressed markers convert to disengaged, so it's had enough. Our Phantom has finally chased it off here. It is gonna get one shot, however, at our uh, US unit here. So uh, minus two die roll modifier for the two suppressed items here. Hoping for a nice low roll. Get a one, this MiG totally fails. So a one minus one is a negative one. It misses our Phantom and that ends the defensive fire phase here. A great result for us because at the end of this round, the two suppressed markers convert to disengaged. The MiG is out of action for the remainder of this one. We can pull our support craft off here. The only thing that is left for us now is our SAM, and but it, we're at low altitude, so it can't hit us there. So that's actually pretty good. Which brings us to our next decision. Now, we've made one target pass here. We could make another rerun here to try to attack again. And because the only thing that's left is the SAM and it can only hit us at uh, um, medium or high altitude, we can pretty much approach this without having any damage at all. So we are going to try anyway to make another attempt to come around and hit things again. There's no enemy fires here, but we do have to make a fuel check and then roll for a random event. So now that our Skyhawk is coming around for a reattack, we have to roll for a fuel event, fuel check first before we roll for a random event. If that's okay, we do the random event. 30% uh, chance we don't make it. Ah, we get bingo fuel. So the Skyhawk jettisons any remaining ordnance. It loses its two 12B missiles and then this, um, that, that's the end of that. 
Skyhawk and moves to the transit to carrier box. Ah, uh, so we do run out of fuel and we won't be able to make a second run on the naval port facilities. Gah, but still 29% damage. Now we have to see if we can complete our mission. So there is a random event possibility here in this transit to carrier box. We'll come in at low altitude. We'll stay there. It served us well so far. Let's see what we get on this die roll. We get an eight weather over carrier changes. Roll a 1d10, zero to four, the weather becomes poor, which it already was. Uh, five to nine, the weather becomes bad. So let's, hopefully we get something here. Four, okay, so the weather becomes poor. It already was poor, so uh, we, it doesn't change at all. So that takes care of the random event here in 17. Now we progress on to the carrier approach box. We'll stay at low altitude, we're getting close to the carrier, and we do need to perform a fuel check here. So as we make our way to the carrier, we can see it off in the distance here. We do have to check to make sure that our fuel isn't critical. Get an eight, and it is fuel okay on the carrier approach box. Now there is one here It says, might plus one if the weather is poor at the target, but this is not the target, this is the trap. So I don't think that die roll modifier applies to us there. Uh, so we look good to go here. We just barely missed it. A nine would have been uh, bingo fuel. We would have had to get refueled there before we could have tried to land. But I think we are okay now. Let us come in to our final landing. In the drizzle and low visibility, our Skyhawk heads into the carrier, trying to touch down. Hulk eyes the tarmac. Here's our roll. We get a minus five because the weather is poor. 42, minus five is a 37, no problems. We are successful. The Hulk has returned. He's landed successfully on the carrier. So all in all, we did 29% damage to the target. Let's take a look and see how this would have scored out on a single mission victory result. So to determine the results of a single mission, we use this, uh, this section in the rule book here. It says that for a single mission, the North Vietnamese win if your aircraft is lost for any reason and the pilot is either killed or becomes a POW. So we did not lose. Um, the player wins by satisfying these three requirements. The pilot survived the mission and returns to the carrier. Bingo. Check. The target was successfully bombed. By successfully bombed, we need an on or off target result that results in greater than zero damage. And we did. We got. 29% damage on the port facilities, so a near miss, but we dropped so much stuff on it that it actually did a pretty significant amount of, well, it did some damage, okay? And then lastly, the Skyhawk lands on the carrier, which is where it is. So uh, we get a, a win for the mission here, although probably not the, the greatest glory here with 29% damage on a target and an aborted second and third runs. We did end up losing one of our Phantoms, of course, we did take out small arms. We took out as well the anti-aircraft fire and then disengaged the, the, the SAM, uh, the MiGs that were there. That was an epic uh, dogfight between our second Phantom and the MiG there that carried over during our whole approach, target run, and then our exit run. Unfortunately, our fuel ran shot short, which diverted us back to the carry before we could make a second and third run with the missiles. But all in all, I think a successful run here for, for Hulk and what could be his first mission of a career. I hope you've enjoyed the mission here. There was a lot of fun to do. I'm, I'm happy that Hulk made it back to the carrier there. Um, I'll put a link up here to the eventual review for Skyhawk, which I hope to have out in a few days. And then another uh, link up here to a video, Wings of Valor, which is another Legion War Games game, taking us to a completely different era, era World War I, for a very different uh, solitaire experience where you control an entire squadron of planes over a campaign in World War I. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in a new video soon.